so last time we looked at the burnt offering and remember that that was um, any variety of animal really from large to small and that's because it was a, um, a, a financial sliding scale. So not only the rich could be in right relationship with God, um, but some of the other economic classes could approach God too for reconciliation and atonement for sin. Um, by the way, who remembers what Mary and Joseph offered at the temple after Jesus was born and, um, and as Mary was going through um, the, the standard purification um, ritual, um, what, what did they offer? They did doves, didn't they? They had to use the bottom scale. <laughs> what was that? Uh, they, they did the doves, if I remember correctly, which is the lowest, lowest financial level. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Awesome. So, I mean, probably like most uh, young people setting off in marriage, um, they weren't too economically stable, you know? Um, it's like rubbing two pennies together and living on love sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, we know that Jesus um, entered into um, kind of a lower class uh, family based on that offering. So, um, so I think that that's validating for um, those not of means when, when looking at Jesus. But there, it goes even further than, than that because um, the next offering in the sacrificial system is the uh, grain offering. Ah, and that's why the talk of bread. Okay, come on, computer, load. There it is, um, a grain offering. And so uh, one of the foremost um, Old Testament scholars has called the grain offering uh, the poor man's surrogate for the burnt offering. So yeah, there's a sliding scale. Um, in the animal realm from everything from bull to two turtle doves. Um, but if one still wasn't able to afford two uh, pigeons or turtle doves, then there was a, a, another option available to them. And that was the, the grain offering. So it'd be a measure, um, maybe like a, a gallon of, of grain, uh, crushed grain that um, could be offered, and that would be the for the more um, destitute or poverty uh, stricken um, families. That would be the initial sacrifice in this in this uh, sacrificial uh, system. So naturally, it is um, grain, fine flour. It can be uh, yeah reduced to flour, prepared that way. Um, often it was offered with a, uh, a drink offering, um, but what was prohibited in the grain offering, Leviticus uh, 2 tells us, is leaven and honey, uh, because these things uh, spoil or make rot um, the, the grain, uh, but instead salt preserves it from putrefaction. That's a great word, right? Um, so this, again, one measure, uh, basically a, a gallon, half gallon, um, something like that, is, is what uh, the most economically um, challenged could, could offer and still approach God. So that's pretty awesome. And this is totally, totally not like, um, oh, that's so cute. Um, you can kind of participate and we'll humor you. Like, it's, it's not, it's. It's not that way, it's totally legitimate because this grain was made into cakes, which then became the bread of the presence, which was in the um, holy place of either the tabernacle or, or temple, whichever era we're talking about. Okay, and so like, 
it's more than just like, oh, cute, you get to play along too. Like the, like the offerings of the destitute are honored in such a way that it is baked into um, these cakes of unleavened uh, bread and, and offered to the Lord. Uh, basically, the Lord God um, eats fresh bread every day, sort of conceptualizes that. And then um, the next day, then the priest actually eats, uh, literally eat this, this bread. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, one of the main perks in, in um, working in a donut store is that, uh, is that you get free day old stuff, right? Um, if you work there, but if you come in and buy, you know, pastries a day later, then, um, then usually that's reduced. So, uh, that's kind of like what, how the priests were rolling, um, and, and God gets the, the first, um, ingestion or ingesting of, of the bread as it were. So, so here in the old Testament, um, this grain offering gets translated into bread, which is a meal for God, a meal prepared essentially by um, the people for God. Um, okay, so hold that thought. Um, now, get back to here. Yes. Of course, when God becomes flesh in Jesus, uh, then we have this uh, very interesting uh, twist on the matter, right? Um, Jesus, the Son of God, Savior of the world, Christ and Messiah, um, says that he is the bread of life, that he, Jesus, Son of God, is the living bread that has come down from heaven. So this is like God, God bread for human consumption, quite the twist, quite the inversion um, from, uh, from the sacrificial system of the Old Testament, Old Covenant. Moreover, Jesus says that he is also, um, you know, the, the living water um, makes allusion to how he um, is, is like wine, and we see this specifically in the Last Supper. Uh, Jesus took a, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So not only the bread part, but then he does the same with the cup after supper, saying, this cup of wine, remember, the grain offering was often paired with uh, the, the drink offering, which is wine. Here, too, Jesus is saying this cup um, uh, of wine that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Um, so we're familiar with this because we practice uh, communion um, at least once a week as a community. Um, but to, uh, again, uh, recognize and appreciate the, the inversion from the Old Covenant, um, the, the sacrificial system um, of old is, is pretty, pretty amazing. Again, whereas people gave uh, offerings that turned into food for God, um, God in Jesus is, as it were, food. Uh, for um, for humans, symbolically bread and drink, um, but Jesus is speaking of sharing in His own life, just as He shares in the life of the Father, um, body and uh, spirit, as it were. So, how does this relate um, to those in salvation relationship, Jesus disciples? Um, in our Christian living, well, first of all, uh, it shouldn't be skipped over that we are um, grain and wine partakers, right? Jesus, just as Jesus gave his uh, life as a, a sacrifice for many, 
And again, this is depicted in terms of, of grain um, and sacrifice in John 12. Very truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so the bread, in addition to the cup that we bless and partake in, it is a sharing of the very life of Christ. Uh, Eucharistically so, because it is the signs or sign of the, the new covenant. So um, Christ followers are grain and wine partakers, are a uh, life of Christ in Bibers. Um, Christians also um, can operate in, in a way of like, like Jesus, where we are grain and drink offerings, so to speak. Okay, and, and really it's, um, it's whatever that we do. If, if we're living in the, um, as unto the glory of God, um, that, that, that is uh, glorifying to, to God. And whether that's eating or drinking, um, some of the mundane, but mundane, but special um, times, or or whatever it is, our whole um, life can be um, an offering. And listen to the Apostle Paul talk about um, spending his life as as an offering, in the means of a an allusion to the drink offerings. He says, even if I am being poured out as a libation, a libation offering, a drink offering, over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Um, so that is that is pretty awesome. Um, in fact, can somebody, I'm not much of a grill master or cook, but um, what, what happens like when you throw um like liquid onto us like onto a meal over a hot plate like like what what is that is that part of like the marinating thing or i'm not talking about dude that uh that does bam or whatever but um actually does he do bam with salt because that's going to be relevant um (laughs) so but like the the libation offering like the drink offering poured over um the grain offering or poured over the, the faith um, of others. That's, that's sort of like the sizzling, um, centralizing part of, of preparing a meal. What's, what's that all going on? Any, anyone able to inform me of that? <laughs> no? Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about at least, or am I, am I dreaming? Okay. <laughs> um, anyways, that was just like a, a, a visual image um, when I was meditating over that, over that practice or that, that, um, that verse. I wonder what that practice looked like. Um, so you remember though, um, that salt preserved the the grain, and honey and leaven was um, forbidden with the grain offering of Leviticus two uh, because it would spoil and rot things. Um, well, the the salt aspect is interesting, um, also in how Jesus fulfills it and um, and transmutes that to uh, Christ followers. Um, just as there would be salt with the, br- the grain offering, um, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Um, and, and this, I think, should be seen at least one way as an offering, you know, that Christians are an offering to the world. Not like, yeah, we're the best part of the world. Uh, take, take that people of other faiths or non-faiths. No, uh, 
I think there's a sacrificial backdrop here so that when we read, you are the salt of the earth. Um, yeah, there's there's this pres preservation, like bring on the flavor of flav. Um, but like there's also Christians as um, a grain, drink, salt offering or just an offering in general to um, to the world, to humanity. And I can't help but think that the apostle has uh, this sacrificial backdrop in, in his thinking also, when again, Paul says, uh, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. All right, well, if the grain offering was uh, the poor person's burnt offering, and if Jesus is the bread of life, um, then we see that salvation in the new covenant is available for, for even the poor. Um, and aren't we all, if not, um, well, and aren't we all poor in spirit without uh, the the presence and indwelling of the life of, of Christ. So Jesus is our true substance. Um, and, and this then is poignant for how um, Jesus sets the, the stage for the new covenant, which is um, this Eucharistic meal of, of grain, and drink of bread and wine of his body and of his uh, blood. We are invited to drink in the grace of God and to ingest uh, the word of God, to live and share in the very life of God by means of the Holy Spirit and Jesus, who is the true uh, substance.